Today I have three more B ideas for you and one of them lights up. Keep watching! I'm Brandy and this is Making It My Own DIYs. Welcome! Project number one. Did I mention we're going to be using some Dollar Tree items? Okay, we're going to need some Waverly chalk paint and a chippy brush. I have my Farm Fresh calendar that my sister picked up for me and we're going to use the August 2022 artwork. I'm going to use this puzzle box. It was a puzzle or a dress up girl box. I get these all the time at the thrift store so you're probably going to find something like it but they make the perfect shadow boxes and they're lightweight and a good big size. So we're going to start off by removing our calendar page without tearing it. So I'm just trying to crease it a little bit and then I decided to take my metal ruler's edge and just cut right through the page so that I could pull it off a little bit better. It pretty much scores it, makes a nice clean line. Even with that, my picture is a little too big. So I'm just going to take my metal ruler and my rotary tool and just trim that down. And I do make a little trim on the top and on the bottom so that I get a nice fit on the inside. Okay, so you see that the back of the page has black writing. If you use a color in the background that is like a gray or a black, it's going to make that disappear. So that's what I'm doing here. But I'm not going to go all the way to the outside because I want this to have white on the parts that are visible. So I'm just going to take my gray paint, just one sloppy sloppy coat here you don't have to be perfect with it and then once it dries i'm going to go ahead and take the white paint and i'm just going to give it kind of a a dry brushed effect i like the little wood showing through the paint and so that's what you see me doing here you just kind of tap off the paint and i'm just using what's in the lid to just brush over here i'm going to use the same technique on the edges of the box and then when I get to the inside, I'm going to make the coat a little bit thicker. You can see right here what we're doing. I want to take this opportunity to invite you all to come over to my community tab. When you're subscribed, you'll be able to um, participate with that. Come to my community tab and just chat with us, visit with us, do the polls that we're doing um, during the week. And then on Fridays, we do drawings for free packages of goodies. And I think everybody's having a lot of fun. I know I am getting to know everybody better. So you can see here how I'm making this thicker because you'll be able to see it. Now we're gonna put our calendar down. I've got my gray in the middle and my white border and I'm just going to use a glue stick to put this down. But you can use whatever technique you like as far as gluing it down. You could even use some double stick tape if that's what you got available. You can use Mod Podge, whatever you have. So I'm just going to put this all over the gray section and right on the edge of the white so that everything sticks down nicely. And you can see how it kind of blends into the background now to look like one big picture. I'm going to take my little Mod Podge tool here, little scraper tool or squeegee tool, and just working a little bit from the inside to the outside so that I can press out any bubbles that may be in there. Inevitably, bubbles will pop up just do your best. Do your best with them, um, you know, depending on what you have, you may be able to lift them up a little and press them out. Now I found this at, I think it was dirt cheap, and it's just some paper. You can see it's just some paper here. They have theirs um, as a, like a table runner, use it for that. But it fits nicely on the back here. It's a little overlap, but that's fine. And from now on, I'll be using this to back my projects that they will look nice and neat on the back because this is kind of nasty looking. I want it to be pretty from all angles. So I'm just using hot glue, but you can use whatever you want to use to stick yours down. This makes it quick and it makes a nice clean, clean look. I'm just pressing this down on the edges because I'll be using my sanding block in just a moment to, um, to sand that off. So continuing around the box, I'm just going to work quickly so that my glue doesn't lift away and it will if you leave too much time it won't stick so just be careful and continuing to crease around the edges until I get the entire thing done this last little part you have to turn your, um, your glue gun sideways and then put it right into that crack but it works 
Then my foam sanding blocks, which I love. I love these things. I get them from Dollar Tree or Dollar and a Quarter Tree, as I like to say. And then you can see here, it just cuts right through that paper. It just takes it right off. Now, if you don't have this paper, you can't find it, not a big deal. Get that brown, I think it's postage paper. You can get it on a big roll at the Dollar Tree and you can use it, cut it down and use it for the back of your projects. It works really good. You could even, if you wanted to be fancy, use some maybe floral or decorative crafting paper. I think they come in 12 by 12. So, you know, if you've got anything smaller than that, it would work perfectly for that. Especially if you used to maybe scrapbook and you don't anymore, there's an idea for you. You can use those supplies. Okay, so you can see here, I just have a little bit I need to pull off where my glue overlapped, but otherwise it looks nice, right? Yep, so now we need a hanger in case we want to hang it rather than having it sit up, but it will sit nice. Um, you'll see at the end when I do my final reveal, you'll see that I have mine showcased um, sitting up. But you can do this to hang it. I want to just give you that option. This makes a really easy hanger. Again, it gives you a very neat backing in case you wanted to give it as a gift or, you know, you just want it to look nice in your home. Make sure it's all stuck down good. Take off my little spider webs from the glue gun. And then you can see how it would look. And there's our beautiful little shadow box B artwork. I love this. So here is my video schedule on Mondays and Thursdays at five. Project number two is going to be a thrift flip. I found a beautiful little pewter tray or a little dish, little trinket dish. You can see what's on the back. I got it at the thrift store and it needs a little love and I know exactly what I wanna to do to it. Always start by cleaning your supplies that you get from the Dollar Tree and then from any place really if you think that you're going to be painting it because you don't want to leave little residue of wax and things like that which is what was on here so maybe somebody used it as a candle holder but they hid the beautiful bee so we're going to do something better to it and I'm just using a little wipe here it's say an alcohol wipe and I'm just going to use it and rub off that tag too I'm going to use some satin blossom white rust-oleum paint and spray it down outside and give it two good coats. And so this is how it looks. The back, I don't like so much. I think I'm gonna paint it black, but I know around the edges I'm gonna use black. I tried a marker originally and the marker looked awful, so I touched it up and then going back over it with a makeup sponge. So I'm just gonna get some black chalkboard paint. I think I got it from the Dollar Tree. And I'm going to go around the edge here with my makeup sponge, just tapping it off a little bit so that it doesn't leave any run over on the sides there and onto the top because I want it to look nice and clean. This is so easy. This was easier than using a marker. So I do recommend using this technique if you want to try to do the enamel look. I think this is cute. I love this little bee dish. All right, so after I do that, I do go ahead and paint the back and then I allow it to dry. See there? Nice, that looks better. Now I'm gonna take my antiquing wax here and a chippy brush. I'm gonna tap off a lot of that. And then I'm going to focus in the crevices around this bee dish. Now, like all the indentions and the, um, you know, the outline, I guess I should say of this bee. I want to work that in there because I want to leave some shadow and some dimension that you don't otherwise see in the dish as we had it originally. But you can leave it that way. So I'm just wiping it back a little bit and that's just a dry sock that I'm repurposing that didn't have a match. You know the dryer likes to eat those things. And then I'm just going to tap some down in there and lightly rub back over until I get the finish that I like. The idea is not to have the entire dish looking antique, but rather to have the indention shown up. Be sure to follow me on my social media. You can find me on Pinterest, Instagram, and Twitter. Now for project number three, we're gonna go back to Dollar Tree. This beautiful little, I guess this is a vase. I found it at Dollar Tree, so pretty. I took the little embellishment off 
This is a little thrifted cork light, but you can use any type of fairy lights that you have. Doesn't have to be this. I'm gonna use a little wood bead. I have a little, um, I guess it's a candle holder that's gonna help me hold things in place while I work. I'm gonna use some jute, and this is some thick jute. I'm going to sit it down in there and protect my fingers, and we're gonna to begin to make a top for this so that it doesn't look like a glass vase anymore. So I'm just putting my protected finger in the center and then just kind of working around, adding the glue where I need it. It looks kind of oval right now, but you know, it's fixed. In the end, it's fixed. You can overlap it. You can make this as thick as you want to make it. And I do actually, after I get it wrapped around as flat as I can get it on the flat part, I do go over that little ridged area there and then onto the part that goes down that would be like the base area. It's just a, maybe a couple of centimeters, but I do wrap that up as well because this will look more like a topper than just you know, a little bit of rope wound up on the bottom. You can see how I went over the edges, like that. And you can just wipe off some of that glue. It's gonna come out of your jute. Just wipe it off. It's real easy to remove. Just wanna make it look nice and neat. Then I'm gonna take my bead and put it in the center. This is how it's looking so far. I love that the amber color of this vase and it just looks like it reminds me of like a beehive so I thought this is definitely what I want to use it for so I'm also going to do this area and cover that completely up and this is easy to do I should have been protecting my fingers so I would be a good example for everybody but uh, I was running with the you know how it is when you get that little spark and you just you get the ideas running and, and you just go for it. That's kind of what I was doing here with this one. So once you get enough on there, you can trim it off. You don't want to cover the lip because it might not sit flat. Again, with our antiquing wax, I'm going to add a little bit there on the bottom and just kind of take a very stiff, also like a chippy brush, but it's a, um, it's a stencil brush. And I'm going to use a little bit at a time to build up the color that I want. I want the color to match sort of what's going on in the beehive um, as far as the, the depth of the tone. I don't want to get it super dark. And if I used a regular paintbrush and just went full force, it would turn this a waxy brown color. And that is not what I'm going for. I just want it to look as though it is aged. And I want it to blend nicely with what is going on in the glass. So we're going to go down to the bottom, or what used to be the top, and work on that too. Just going back and forth and stippling. And that glue is really holding well on this glass. And so this is the color I think I like. Very pretty. But you can continue to add as much as you want for this. And I did see one of these little vases in Dollar Tree a few days ago, so you can find them. So now the idea here... I'm going to use just a tiny bit of glue in the opening to hold down my little control so that it stays in place when I put it on the base that I've created. So you can use a little piece of wood, a little round wood. You could sit it back in that little vase or candle holder over there if you'd like. You can use it just like this and that just gives you an idea how that would look. Or you can use like a, a candle topper, like an um, old candle topper topper or a jar top like a jar lid and I really like this aged one this is one that's been through the dishwasher a few times and the edges are very aged but it doesn't have the color that I want so in order to give it a more rustic or a more aged look I'm going to take that same antiquing wax and I'm going to go around all of the edge get in every one of those little cracks there every one of those little indentions right down into the lip where it curls over and then all over the top you can let your wax sit after you get it on there and let it dry a little bit and then wipe it back and that will give you a little more of an aged look and if you like this look you certainly don't have to wipe it back at all but you will need to let it dry before you continue with your project 
But for purposes of a video, so I can help you to understand, I am going to wipe this back and leave. See how it sinks down into the indentions? I love that. I just, I love that. Even though I'm transitioning more to a cottage look, I, I have to have some rustic in there somewhere. How adorable is this? Is that not the cutest thing? I believe in you, I really do, and I know that you could do something like this and it'll be so amazing. Here are some of the things that we did in the last B video, along with some of the things that we did in this B video, so that you can see they work really well together. Y'all keep in mind, my goal is 15,000 subscribers by August the 1st. So if you're watching this video and you really love budget-friendly DIYs and you like the style in this video and the links that I will be leaving for you, please consider subscribing and joining the family and helping me on my goal. I would love that. Thanks to everybody who has been supporting me so far. I love you guys and I have had so much fun. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon.